Thank you to 23andMe for supporting PBS Digital Studios. It sounds terrible. It does. I think it has to go more that way. We might want to try uh, messing around with these wires too, you know? I Turn it off. Yeah. Hey, I'm Diana. <coughs> uh, we're gonna get through this. I'm Diana, you're watching Physics Girl, and that was us trying to make a levitator. A few months back, I got this email, out of the blue, from the University of Bristol about this DIY, make it at home, acoustic levitator kit. Have you ever heard of an acoustic levitator? What? I haven't. Yes, I have. Yes? Yeah. I thought it was some sort of guitar that, like, flew up in the air. <laughs> Magic. I get it. You may not have heard of this. But the idea is that you use sound waves from a bunch of different speakers pointed in different directions, focused on a point, and you can levitate something at that point in midair. This is real, yo. I showed one of these from another research group at the University of Tokyo three years ago in a video. But this email was saying that anyone can make one of these at home. I was skeptical. And this one. Come in! Whoa. Demo! <laughs> Welcome Your to the party. Already started. We already started. No. This is a pencil sharpener. Uh, no. <laughs> We're in America. This is a problem. I got this. Okay. Are you ready? Oh. Oh. Oh my God! It's oh going. It's going. God. Oh yeah, it is. <gasps> oh my God! It's so cool. Houston, we have levitation. <laughs> We just made this happen here. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna get ripped apart. Oh, it did get ripped apart! <laughs> I'm serious! Are you guys excited? This is amazing. How do you feel? It's really excited. I think, look, look, look. So I, I, I think this is half of the spacing we had before. Oh, cool. Yeah. The technology behind this has been around for decades. And I'm gonna explain it later in this video for those of you who are like me and cannot go through the rest of your life without understanding how something works. But the genius of this little at-home project is making it available for everyone. Why did the original group from the University of Bristol design this? Don't get me wrong, I'm appreciative. This is super dope. But that was the mystery to me. And so I traveled to the University of Bristol in England to ask. So my name is Asir Maso, I'm a research assistant at the Mechanical Engineering Department and I always work with acoustic levitation. It's open for everyone, they can build it at home and experiment as they wish. But that's the good thing about democratizing the technology, you know, it's out there and everyone can do with it whatever they want. Some people had very nice suggestions like, uh, could we put a seed and germinate it while it's levitating? Or can we put a, an egg of an insect and will it hatch while it's levitating? Acoustic levitation, in practice, seems complicated. So how is it possible to make a kit that someone like me and Dan and Kyle could make in three hours? Though I should confess, Dan is a physicist, Kyle's an engineer, and all three of us have at least some electronics and soldering experience, but we're not frequent hobbyists. We just like making things that inspire us to say, I don't know if this is actually going to work, but it does work. So let's see how. The main concept here is standing waves. Standing waves are not normal waves. They need very special conditions. A regular wave in physics is just a disturbance traveling through a medium. Like when you disturb a slinky at one end, the disturbance or wave travels to the other end. If I then constrain or bound the slinky at the other end, the wave will reflect back. You can test this out by being that weird person that yells at canyons. Your vocal disturbance reflects back. Now if I send wave after wave down the slinky, they continue to reflect back. And what I get is two waves waves, one moving at me, one moving away from me. But obviously the slinky can't be in both places at once, so the waves combine, they interfere. They add when they're on top of each other and they subtract when they're not. And something very special can happen when the two waves interfere at just the right conditions. You can get a wave that doesn't appear to be moving in any direction. That's a standing wave. The places along the standing wave that aren't moving at all are called nodes. Remember the nodes, they're important, y'all. Standing waves can happen anywhere you use the right frequency on a confined medium. They can also happen in two dimensions by vibrating or sending waves along a 2D plate with the right frequency on a confined medium. The places where the sand collects are the nodes. Remember the nodes. Now, in three dimensions, I think you see where this is going, we need a 3D medium we can send waves through. Air. And we can create a three-dimensional wave profile with nodes. The nodes here are the places where the air is not moving, even though it's moving a lot everywhere else around the node. The nodes are the zen zones. If you're at the node, you can chill there. Anywhere else, and you'll get knocked away. So in our levitator, our little pieces of 
styrofoam and lint hang out at the nodes. They get held there at the nodes because if they're anywhere else, they'll get pushed back in or pushed out. And there you have acoustic levitation. It's more like acoustic tweezers. Acoustic straight jackets? Mm, mosh pits? <laughs> Metaphors are failing today. Uh. So how is it possible to make an acoustic levitator with a perfect 3D wave profile in your home? The key is this 3D printed shape. All these speakers, they need to be at a specific position and with a specific angle. And one way of achieving that is to design this base and 3D print it. If you try to put them in a flat surface, it wouldn't work as well. You can see that there is only one signal going to all the top transducers. And that's possible because the focusing is done because the shape. This has a bowl shape that naturally focuses all the acoustic power in the center of the levitator. And if you have sources in a flat surface with the same face, that would not create levitation. The structure puts all the transducers at just the right distance so that all the waves add and cancel in just the right way. I had been curious about why they designed this DIY kit, and as Dr. Moso said, it was so they could democratize the technology. And plus, it's super cool, which I think should be the only prerequisite for doing science. You can quote me on that. But there are other practical reasons for perfecting levitation with sound. People are very familiar with magnetic levitation, and it's good because it's very strong, but it has a big limitation, and that's the materials that you can levitate. They need to be ferromagnetic, diamagnetic, or paramagnetic. With acoustic levitation, you can levitate any sort of material. So it could be liquids, it could be powder, it could be electronic components, insects, basically you name it. Any material with a certain limit in density. Yeah. So you want to be able to levitate any kinds of materials. Although there is a limit with current technology in size and density of things that you can levitate. So I was also curious about what other kinds of research they'll be doing into acoustic levitators. All the levitators that we have seen, they are a standing wave levitator. Yeah. Meaning that there are waves coming from the top and uh, waves coming from the bottom, they interfere and create a standing wave. Yeah. This one is different. There is only one wave. Yeah, it looks like coming a plunger. Out. Yeah. <laughs> this one can still levitate particles because it creates a field that looks like a pair of fingers holding the particle. It doesn't create a standing wave, but it can still levitate a particle. As I said, we have the challenge of size. Can we levitate particles bigger than half the wavelength? That's something that we are working on. And another challenge is manipulating multiple particles individually, having a group of particles and they are all moving independently from one each other. That would be so cool to have like synchronized dancing of bugs. Fake ones? The last thing, if you wanna do this at home, I've got just some tips and tricks that we figured out. Dr. Marissa's team put up a really easy to follow Instructables project online. I will link to that in the description. And when you get to the step where he says, check the polarity of these transducers, the plus and minus, heed that warning. They're marked plus and minus, but we tested them all and they were completely random. Don't trust the manufacturer. Also make sure all of your soldering connections are good. We were not able to get water to levitate with this one yet. We need an oscilloscope to test that all the transducers are working and we didn't have one in time to make this video. But that just means that our 3D wave profile in here is not ideal. Oh my gosh, yes. If you're filming this thing, your microphone may not be happy. These transducers are putting out 40,000 Hertz, which is above human hearing. It's about twice the frequency of the top of human hearing, but some microphones pick it up. So be aware of that. And yeah, happy levitating. And thanks for watching and happy physicsing. I want to thank 23andMe for supporting PBS Digital Studios. 23andMe comes from the fact that human DNA is organized into 23 pairs of chromosomes. 23andMe is a personal genetic analysis company created to help people understand their DNA. And understanding your 23andMe results may even help you gain a newfound appreciation for your family after learning about your shared genetic connections. For example, if you and your family have received your results, you can compare who you share your Neanderthal DNA with. 23andMe has a special holiday offer now through December 26th. You can go to 23andMe.com to check out their holiday offer and order kits for your family. Show your support for this show by going to 23andMe.com slash physicsgirl.